Hello guys and welcome to a new war game video today. Uh, this time round we're going to be looking at some Israeli units and basically we're going to have some in-depth discussion about what each unit does and what their stats are and what's likely to change. Now you have to remember that this is on the beta patch so all of the units are likely to change in some way or another in terms of their statistics but their role will probably stay the same which is kind of what we're going to go through in this video so I hope you guys enjoy so uh, what are we looking at in terms of logistics yeah so the Israeli logistics tab is pretty cool I mean um, you know obviously stats aren't final but we'll go over some of the stuff here so you got the HAPAC which is a command infantry pretty cool and they come in pretty much all the transports really almost all the transports from the Num Num, the mightiest truck in the game, the uh, ETR 152, which is just a sort of fast truck. Same one the North Koreans have, I think. The Badalas, which is a pimped up uh, M13 with three machine guns. The Zelda, which is a slightly more armored pimped up um, M13 with more machine guns. You got the Nagmachon, which is one of the most interesting looking units in this DLC, which is uh, very heavily armored for 10 points with two MGs at the moment. And then for 15 points, you can get the uh, Axara. And this one, this is really crazy, because this vehicle, I mean, obviously, this can change. It is just in uh, just in this beta patch, but it has 10 front armor. Crazy heavy vehicle for transport. Then you can get the Makeva 2A, which is like the really cool one, because this is the tank you can bring your infantry in. And we can talk about that a bit more in the infantry sort of section. Uh, and then you have just a Bell, an Anafa Bell chopper, so nothing special there. Yeah, the... Command infantry, um, they're pretty, they're definitely standard, but it's very interesting to see like how many different APCs you can bring them in, and especially with the Axara, you can you can take them into pretty risky situations and get them into those nice infantry places where you can keep those CVs. So that's a really nice um, sort of addition as an Israeli unit. Uh, what else have we got? We just got a standard truck there, um, yeah, the hundred and ten point Pickard. Uh, then we got the BTR-40 variant, pretty similar, just has a machine gun. Um, then, of course, we have the M113G, which is the command sort of one, the Mugaf, it's called in this. And the, the Israeli <laughs> like, names are just ridiculous. Why do, why do they not just call it an M113G, <laughs> like, like they do with everything else? Anyway, the Because Mug Mugaf sounds way better. <laughs> <laughs> the unarmored... Um, yeah, with, well, two front armor and two side armor. It's pretty decent. Just 120 points, pretty solid to unit. But why would you take that when you can get the Axarit? Yeah, which 10 is, more points. Uh, 10, yeah, 10 more points, and you get a serious amount more armor. And, yeah, it's just brilliant. What do you think about this uh, Macava uh, CV, though? I mean, I don't see the point in it, really, because, yeah, it's 160 points, but because you can get the Macava transport tank, right, which is way better, and the Axarit is, like, it's already very well armored, the price i almost feel like you know the, the main thing about a tank cv because you don't want it to fight enemy armor you want it to take like artillery rounds and cluster and stuff and the the axarit will do that it's really well armored at least in the patch so you know i feel like it's almost a bit redundant getting a makeva tank like the cv tank yeah 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 that's definitely a good point you you don't necessarily want your want to use your command tanks for fighting um, you can use like a T-72 to defend yourself uh, if you're playing Red Fort because of the 4HE, but the um, the Axara, yeah, like you say, that definitely take takes the role of sponging artillery shells, so that's really good. And then we got a standard sort of re um, command helicopter, only 100 points, you know, it's not too bad. Yeah. Don't really see them used very often though. Classic FOB, of course, and then we have the Rio... The Oshkosh and the Yitzur. <laughs> the Oshkosh. <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, the Rio and Oshkosh, it's just, you know, the American 15 point transport or uh, resupply and also the American 40 point Hemet. It's the same vehicle. So, uh, yeah, they're pretty cool. The Yesor, very uh, very fast, but also it's, it's a low supply transport or yeah. uh, resupply chopper. It looks massive, but it's only got 1,500 supply, so. Yeah, it's a bit awkward. Um, also, I found the Nimrod, it takes ages to land. Uh, it does, it does. So I noticed that as well, actually. I don't know it's why. It's quite irritating. So that would be a really annoying sort of supply helicopter to use. be very vulnerable uh, to be shot down. Anyway, should we move on to the infantry? Have a quick yeah, scan over, over these. 
So what are we starting with here? So we've got the Barkhands, which are just a sort of your standard Stinger C squad, or Stinger A squad even. Um, not that great, pretty low range against helis. I mean, as we'll go on when we see the support tab, the AA is probably the weakest section of this, this faction. Uh, you can get it in you know, quite a few transports, none of the heavy ones though, just the Zelda, like the M113s basically, and the BTR. And yeah, I was quite disappointed with their, their infrared AA. Like you do have the Bas Bazak and the Barkan, and the Barkans, yeah, like you said, it's more like a Stinger A. Well, it is a Stinger the, A. The, yeah, it is a Stinger <laughs> A. Um, but it has the 2,275 meter range versus helicopters, which is really, really bad uh, in comparison to other IR squads. And the Bazak is obviously just the, the worst version with the red eye. And uh, that 35% accuracy in the 3HG power is nothing really going to be using very often in any deck. <laughs> what about those Dorban LRs, though? That's something to talk so, about. These guys are pretty good, actually, Spike LRs, because they've got a lot of accuracy. They've got 2,625 meter range. Now, I'll get onto it later. I wouldn't take these in the deck, because you get the same capability with the Maglan Recon, but... Um, the, do the doorbuns, they're pretty good, honestly. Like, if you did, like, a mechanized deck or a motorized deck, you might want to put these in just because of the extra, extra slots. Yeah. Um, you know, it's not a bad AT gem, but the AP's a little low. Yeah, I would agree that they're definitely a unit that you would take uh, if you have more infantry slots than usual because uh, it, it feels like it takes up a slot where there are so many more valuable things in Israeli infantry tab is so yeah the doorban LR has this nice spike LR with a really decent range not sure if it's going to get changed I doubt that the range will get changed I think maybe the accuracy might get nerfed or something like that but um, for now uh, pretty solid HGM squad probably not worth a card on a standard deck but will definitely be used to take up extra slots uh, what about these uh, Gav Nuni or so, <laughs> the Gav Nooney, um, they're, they're not great. They're a, a fist squad, I think is what people call them. And uh, that means that they can fire against infantry too with HE, but you'll see in a second, they have grenade launcher infantry, so why would you want the dragon, which is honestly a pretty pathetic um, sort of ATGM slash anti-infantry tool when you could go and get the grenade launcher infantry. It's one of those things, maybe, maybe if you had a mechanized deck, you might consider putting it in, but I mean, these ones do have a bit more utility because you can bring them in all the transports, so you can get the Makeva transport. Um, right, let's let's just go over the Makeva because this unit yeah, is... this is like the first unit yeah. that we've seen all of the available APCs and uh, transports that are available. So we may as well go through them while we're here. Yeah, so the Makeva two A is incredibly strong at the moment. Obviously, you know this is a beta patch. We've said that before, but. I can't stress enough just how good this unit is. I've been playing lots of games with it. Razman has personally broken down after playing against this Makava. Uh, <laughs> it is very strong, right? Because for the price, you get incredible stats. But beyond that, you get a grenade launcher as well. And when you're fighting up close, that grenade launcher will shred things. So not only is it a decent tank, it's like a BMPT on, on steroids. And yeah. you, get, you get infantry in it. It's fantastic. Um, it's also on prototype, so you can take it in, mech in like blue four decks. Um, but yeah, really nice unit. You know, you really want at least one of these in your deck. But you can take them in a few a few units. So we'll, we'll I'll sort of I'll, you know, we'll we'll note which units you can take them in. But the Gavnuni are a ten point squad. You can take them. In. Yeah, and the, the the great thing about the Makava, yeah, like you said, it's a massive buff to like uh, blue four mechanized, and that's just just something that's so great and what I found is when you have like a couple squads with some cheap infantry you can have like three of these Makava 2As and they will demolish infantry squads in seconds it's ridiculous and they can survive against AT like munitions for quite a while uh, with that 18 front armor for 80 points it's pretty incredible so yeah, they're definitely a very versatile unit that can be used in so many different ways. So let's have a look at these other APCs quickly. We've already sort of covered the uh, Vardalas and the Zelda. Um, that two front armor is actually pretty decent. Um, I do really like the Zelda for the five points. I think that's a very cost-effective APC. 
But then when you go like five points more to the Nagmachon and the Axarit, uh, the improvement of armor is just insane. Well, like the big thing to note, right? So the Badlass has one armor, one front armor. That can be one shot by most things. The Zelda has two. That means you need 16 AP to, to destroy it, which means most line infantry, unless they're a 90s version, won't kill it in one shot. The Nagmachon, however, has eight front armor. That's crazy for five points. That will take quite a few tank shots. The Azkarit, though, the Azkarit is beyond that. A Fusilier 90 squad, the Law 80, like the 22 AP, that can't penetrate it. That can't kill it in one shot. You know, it's. For 15 points, I think this is a fantastic unit. Yeah, I think it's unlikely to change too much in terms of armor values. Uh, it might drop a like one armor value and the Nagmachon may be the same. Like they might drop it a little bit or make them cost more. But I don't think it I think in general, like the, the purpose of those APCs will stay the same. Just heavily armored, very easy uh to use to get infantry into cities without having to worry too much about your standard sort of AT infantry. And uh, that will be very, very good for when we get to like some of the more beefier units that you can use with Israel. Uh, so let's move on to the next sort of unit we can use, which is the Givati. What do you think of those? Um, the Givati kind of interesting. They they have very good anti-infantry stats. That uh, Galil um, UCMG is really good. But, you know, they are shock. They are 15 men. But the RPG is a little so-so. And they're not a bad unit for sure. But... I would take other units further down the list, I think, just just as a caveat. But, you know, 15-man squad, 25 points, great anti-infantry. But, you know, they're worth taking, I guess, if you if you have the slots, if you, you know, maybe yeah. mechanized or motorized. I've, I've tended to take, like, a card of these because I do really love their anti-infantry capability with the 15-man squads. And that Galil, like, just with the 600 rounds per minute, you said that it has, like, a smaller mag, so it has to reload It does reload often. faster, yeah, but it doesn't, but it doesn't change the fact it's it crazy It does good. a lot of DPS. So versus infantry, very, very strong squad versus, like, an assaulting squad with a lot of APCs maybe not so much but uh, definitely in like city fighting this thing's going to do pretty well um what about the next squad we got the messiah at or the messiah messiah i think these guys are really good so i'm sure everyone who's watching this knows about the czech ags 17 which is a crazy good grenade launch unit these guys are basically the same but you can bring them in even better transports um so they have the grenade launcher. They will stun and kill infantry with absolute impunity. Um, they'll, they'll stun stun tanks because the grenades actually down, well they they affect tanks basically. Um, so you can do morale damage to tanks and sometimes even crit them. So you can give them you know stabilization malfunctions and stuff with the grenades. Um, really nice unit. I really like these. Yeah, what I found uh, the perfect use for these missiles is, is like on the edge of a town. Uh, or sort of space to town fighting so you can sort of stun and kill a lot of like enemy fire support but also if you're in a town sector yourself and you're firing across to another town sector where there's infantry these things do so much damage with that grenade launcher and that's really caught me off guard in some of the games we've been playing but uh, of course they can again come in all of the wonderful APCs so you can get them into some really nice positions uh, in order to really take advantage of that grenade launcher as well. So yep, then we got really the uh, Miluum, which is like the first, is it the first female unit in the game? No, no, you've got the North Korean ones. Ah, the yeah, the four, yeah, the North Korean the ladies. First blue four, the first Blue Four ladies unit. But yeah, it's a reserve infantry and honestly it's, you know, Standard reserve infantry. Pretty, I mean, pretty standard. Yeah. Unfortunately, not really good for much. I mean, the maybe days, ta taking rounds. <laughs> the days of uh, reserve infantry spam are long gone. Yeah, no more one point transports, unfortunately. I miss my six point reservists. <laughs> but that, <laughs> that was back in LD, wasn't it? That was a long time ago. But yeah, um, I mean, there are some uses, you know. I just, I, I'm, I'm honestly, I, I don't think they're worth the slot unless, unless you're playing mechanized and you really can't think of anything to fill up that last infantry slot. I wouldn't personally use them. 
yeah, exactly. It's, again, it's just something you'd use if you had extra slots. Anyway, let's move on to your standard sort of line infantry. You got the Rovats, which is or Rovates. I don't even know how you say half of these units because they all have very interesting names. But yeah, standard sort of regular infantry. Uh, what do you think of these? Um, that okay. I mean, the fall the fallow fallow is <laughs> a good a good MG. Um. Again, it does have the same clip thing though, so it does reload after a certain burst round period. Um, honestly, not too amazing. And the reason is that the next card is the say it's like a 90s variant and it costs the same. So, you know, it's. I suppose as far as line infantry go, they're, they're the standard really. Again, you can take them in all the really cool transports. So, uh, the Bardless, the Zelda. I mean, when you think of this thing like the Zelda, it costs the same as all the other ML13s, but it has three machine guns. So. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's you know you can take it. I mean, if you really wanted to, you could take it for the transport. So, you know, if you wanted to bring the Makeva, but at the same time, I would personally just take the Roviat nineties, the one down. Mm. Because yeah, they the have... the standard Roviats are just there for if you're playing uh, sort of limited 80s, decks. Eighties, yeah, eighties. Um, so that's when you would take these instead of the Roviat nineties. If you have the Roviat nineties in like in the deck or available you should definitely be taking them. So do you want to just take us through those? Yeah, so the Roviat 90s are... Well, they're, they're just better all around. They have a better rifle. They have a much better AP weapon because, as we mentioned before with the transport, 16 AP is the minimum to one-shot two armor vehicles, which is a bigger thing than you think about most of the time because that means, you know, the difference between a support vehicle sort of, like, continuing to fire its machine gun at you or not. And... That 16 AP is a really nice breakpoint. They also have a better MG, the uh, the Mag, even though it does have it does apparently have a slightly lower rate of fire and accuracy because it's a belt-fed weapon, if I'm not mistaken. Um, that means that it has a much longer like firing period before they have to reload. So you know, very nice. And again, you get them in all the nice transports. I personally take these in the Makava, and in I mean in the blue mechanized deck, I take two cards of these in Makavas. So yeah, uh, this is probably one of the most cost-effective com combinations in the entirety of Blue Four right now. I think it. I think it is. I think the Rovet Nineties and the Makava Two A. The only one that I would say is more cost-effective is the Israeli Recon, but I mean we'll get to those later. But yeah, a fantastic combination. It really is. Yeah, I, I just really like the fact that that, that law has twenty rounds per minute. It's very very useful. Uh, for taking out those APCs and a lot of people don't really know about that sort of like you were saying the thresholds as to where uh, like the AP value really counts so it's great to, for people to probably know about that and definitely should uh, be on your mind when you're trying to choose uh, infantry units making your decks anyway should we move on to the uh, special forces that Israel have uh, the Sheatet team uh, much better than the previous 12, don't worry about it. These guys are the best of the, the best of the 13. Um, they have the AKM, which is kind of interesting. And one thing to note on as well, one thing to touch on is with this uh, with this preview and with the next patch, uh, infantry weapons are getting standardized. So what that means is elite infantry will always have a better, better machine gun than their regular counterparts and so on and so forth. So uh, the PKM is not terrible anymore. It was... Kind of bad, I think. Or maybe I was thinking of the RPK or something. I can't remember which one I was thinking of. No, I'm of, pretty sure the PKM just the PKM? had a really terrible rate of fire, didn't it? I think so. I can't remember actually. The RPK was patch. fine because you oh, had yeah, a CQC that, that version. One, yeah. yeah. By the way, you know, the PKM, the AKM, they're both fine weapons. Um, and they have the small, or a clone of the small, which is a nice 70% uh, accuracy, 21 AP weapon. And, um, I mean, as as far as Special Forces go, they're not bad, but they're definitely not the top tier of Special Forces. You know, they're not, like, an FSK squad or a Corps Mariner 90 squad. Um, yeah, I find the rate of fire on their AKM really lets them down. Also, one thing that really annoys me sometimes is the rate of fire of the AT weapon. Like, I found that it's useful because of the 875 meter range, but then again... It, takes a little bit too long to reload like in those situations where you just want to get that second rocket off as soon as possible in order to like kill a unit kill the transport, and yeah. then 
it, you know, that you take the fire support and get suppressed in the meantime, it really sucks. So that 10 rounds per minute can get on your nerves sometimes. But, you know, yeah, like I said, a pretty decent sort of standard yeah, special okay. forces unit, but not the best. I mean, there is one thing to note, though. This is the first unit that we've come across that comes in the Nimrod, which is a interesting helicopter for sure. Um, transport helicopter, and obviously, we said this before, could be changed, but probably not. With 2,975-meter range, 70% accurate, and 60% stabilized rockets that do 28 AP. So this is a... It's like a plane ATGM on a helicopter. Uh, it's really potent. But it does cost a lot, and you can only bring it with the infantry, so that's 110 points in total, and that's a big investment. Yeah, but this Nimrod, that thing fires so quickly, and yeah, it can it be very potent, and it won't be hanging around for long because all those missiles will be gone, and you can get it back to base to, to reload. The only thing that I have found is it kind of surprises me that they, this... this you know, helicopter doesn't have any armor stats because I reckon they should maybe give it like one front armor because I found that it's been so weak. Like it's actually pretty well balanced at the moment at 80 points because the the thing is actually quite easy to shoot down, I found. Uh, so if you're not too careful with it, it can just be shot out of the sky. But the 2,975 meter range definitely does help you stay out of range of sort of standard AA. Well, I mean, it's one of those things where if you know the deck your opponent's playing, which, you know, unless you're playing ranked, you should do. You know, there's certain factions that don't have AA that's past that range breakpoint, you know, of 2,800 meters. So, you know, you just want to kind of, in those situations, you want to try and exploit it a bit more. But in general play, I'd say it's one of those units that's really good if you get it right, but it's really easy to mess up. So, you know, yeah, um, take well, it with I've a just found... of, uh, caution. I just found that like if you're going to bring in an HGM helicopter, like why wouldn't you bring in one that's like purposeful for that? Like rather than bringing it in as a uh, transport, which is going to make the the unit cost an absolute ton. And one thing that happened to me in one of my games is my uh, Maglan squad got shot down in a Nimrod, and it was like 120 points went down in flames because the Nimrod just isn't actually that tanky as a transport helicopter. So, I mean, even the Anapha isn't, but, you know, 6 uh, strength is basically the same as 10 strength when you don't have armor. <laughs> so Well, I mean, I, it's, it, it's not so much that. It's, it's that a, a lot of the um, anti-air missiles are sort of like 5, five HG, at least in blue 4. I can't remember about red 4, but... You know, I mean, the 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 Nimrod will sub generally survive a second hit, whereas the Anapha won't. But that doesn't mean too much, really, because once you get hit once, you're probably going to get hit again because you get stunned and panicked, yeah, and it starts spinning this, around this crazy. I mean. And yeah, it's, it's, it's just the, the difference between that is nothing if you don't have armor. But yeah. um, let's move on to the Zan Hanim, which are the sort of the paratroopers of Israel. We have two variants. We have the San Hanim and the San Hanim 95. They cost different, so we may as well cover both of them. The first one comes with an Uzi and a 17 AP power AT weapon. 10 rounds per minute. It's okay. <laughs> it's nothing special though. Uh, the Uzi isn't amazing. The FN Mag, I mean, it's, it's okay. okay. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's fine. It's this is bad. a very, very standard sort of choice of unit, isn't it? A lot of emphasis on the word standard. I mean, for that price, it's you know, it's it's not amazing. It's not terrible. It's not amazing. Yeah, I, I wouldn't recommend it unless you're, again you're filling up extra slots. Uh, but we do have the Zan Hanim ninety five, and these are definitely uh, one that would be worth looking at. They definitely are. With shock training, that means that their MG and their rifle are really nice. They have good rate of fire, good accuracy, um, and they have the same small clone as the um, Sayer. Uh, Shayatet 13 as the Shayatet 13 yeah the same small clone um, which like you said before it's, it's a nice nice launch but it does suffer from that 10 rounds a minute so you know really good against single targets but if you've got like a horde of APCs coming within the range of it you've sometimes got to um, maybe move your unit back and try and micro it a bit more because 10 rounds a minute isn't just going to keep popping through them it's going to take a little bit more to reload 
Yeah, you're going to have to jump them back a town sector out of line of sight and then jump them back forwards when they're reloaded. And yeah, it can just get really irritating, especially when you have like a lot of town fighting going on. So they're pretty good anyway. Like they will hold their own against other infantry for sure. Um, but would you rather have a Shayat Tet 13 squad than a Zan Hanim 95? I'm not, I'm not sure. I actually take both, but... I mean, really, at the end of the day, th th there's not too much difference, really, because, you know, I take the Shia Tet 13 in the Num Num, so I can't get a Num Num for the San Hamim, San, San Ham <laughs> for the 95s. Yeah. So I have to take the, the Hammer, which is it's basically the um, the Humvee. Also, great news, guys, the Humvee has 10 HP now, a real buff for the Humvee. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and, it is uh, actually, yeah. Yeah, so what I've ended up doing was basically I just used the Num Num Shire Tats, and then when I ran out of them, I used the, the San, Am San, Ham San Hammonds. And then <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> I find that like if you're bringing in the San Hammonds with the 95, like 95s with the Hammers uh, or Hamers, then it costs the same as a Shire Tet in the Num Nums. <laughs> so, I mean, in, in general, like cost efficiency, the Shire Tet are gonna be more cost efficient if you bring them in the num nums but anyway that's a pretty good uh, sum up of the infantry and what you you can expect with israel uh, we do have some pretty standard sort of line infantry then we've got uh, a really terrible uh, dragon squad with the first infantry <laughs> then you've got the grenade launchers uh, you've got uh, quite a lovely sort of range of units but i think what really makes the Israeli infantry stand out is the fact that they can bring the Makava 2A. <laughs> pretty much, pretty much. I mean, this thing is just like beyond the reproach. It's the best transport, 100%. Um, I, I'd almost say, now Now, personally, I would love for this staying because I really enjoyed the days when you could get away with playing blue mechanized. Not that good anymore in ranks, but with this, I think this is going to be such a nice buff to blue mechanized, it's going to be worth taking. Um, because one of the big things that really stands out with these guys is their anti-tank options aren't great, or at least close range. You know, the, the spike is a fine AT gem, but they only have 21 AP. Uh, and they have 10 rounds a minute. Like So if you can get some Fusilier 90s in there, maybe some Panzer Grenadiers as well for a bit more sort of oomph with the infantry fighting, you can. Uh, it's a really nice combo because the, the law 80 of the Fusilier 90s has... 20 rounds a minute and 22 AP, so it just shreds everything it fires at. Um, but yeah, I think Blue, Blue Mech is really nice with that Makava, so yeah, it's the real highlight of the infantry tab for me. <laughs>